three, and go. Beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Max again here. So we're gonna focus, we're gonna do a little uh, ab and core workout today. Let's just begin, just kind of warming everything up here. So, kind of some of the basic teaching principles that we'll go over today will be the plank. Um, kind of we'll go through some technique drills to teach you how to brace yourself and to activate the proper muscle groups. That's really the most crucial part of planking. You know, in planking we see, I mean, it's ambiguous really in, in most core routines. Let's get out here. So, so yeah, so just a nice warm up, some technique drills, then like a fun kind of just back to back, really intense core routine to kind of finish everything up, okay? Nice deep breaths here. Get those knees nice and high. We're just getting everything loosened up with that blood flowing. Nice and high. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful butt kicks. Bring the heels back. Here, there it is. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Wide base, kind of get into your squatting position, okay? And descend kind of about halfway here. So, our first bracing technique. Anytime you're doing a low, lower body exercise, such as a squat or a lunge, really, your connection to the floor, or to your contact point, that's kind of where the power begins, right? So as you're doing these squats, I want you to grip your toes into the floor, as if you're trying to grab dirt with your toes, and slowly descend. And the whole point of this is we want to create tension through the toes, through the ankles, through the knees, and finally through your glutes, okay? So before we begin, and stay at the top, Grip everything, grip the toes, grip the ground with your toes, brace the knees nice and tight, squeeze the butt, and slowly descend to your height and come back up. So the height is really gonna be determined by your flexibility, ability, uh, your anatomy, there's a lot of factors here. Um, obviously I want you to sit down into the squat a little bit, so you want to break at the hips. We don't want to be coming out here. You're losing power. So again, focus on that bracing. Tighten everything from your ankles to the hips. That's kind of what we're working with, all lower body here. So bracing, coming down, pause, and come up. You should be so tight. You should be creating so much muscular tension that if I were to come by and try to push you over, you'd be able to resist me. So that's how I want you to squat for now. All the way down. All the way up. But this requires some focus, you know what I mean? But rest assured, these are concepts that we're going to build upon through today's workout. So again, nice and tight. Should be just like, like a piston inside an engine going up and down. No wasted movement. Everything is tight. Glutes, ankles, knees. And, th and this is actually, I mean, this is really good for most exercises because it prevents that knee sway, that knee buckle. We're up to at least like 30 squats here. We're just going. Good. Shake it off, shake it off. Good. Hands straight, legs straight. Well, actually, we'll go right hand straight, left leg straight. So it's opposing. We're making just a big cross here. So opposing body limbs here. So here, I don't want you to be tight. I want you to be long. I want you to stretch everything out here. Gotta, if you can, try to touch your toe or try to touch your toe with your fingers here. Again, I'm not that flexible, but you get the idea. And this is just to kind of give you a little breather from all that tensing, all that flexing. You know? Five, four, three. Set your gaze on something in front of you. Keep the neck neutral. It'll help with your balance. Two, one beautiful switch. So left hand is straight, right leg is straight, then meet in the middle. Again, set your gaze on something in front of you. If you're, if you're still having problems with balancing, make sure you're on a flat surface. The flatter you are, the easier this will be. 
And sometimes shoes are counterproductive and work against you. So if you do have, uh, typically running shoes have a lot of gel, which is great for running, you know, it takes pressure off, but kind of like um, counterintuitive in a balanced exercise. So you can just strip down to your bare feet. Four, three, two, one. Beautiful, good, shake it off, shake it off. So here we go. Let's, um, let's go to the lunges now and just practice that bracing. So split squat position. Front foot, dig it into the floor. Back foot is about two feet back, offset. You're on your toe. And then all I want you to do is just dip that back foot down. Tighten everything up. Come on. So at the bottom of the movement, there should be a 50% um, weight distribution between your front foot and your back foot. So you shouldn't be all the way up to the front and not all the way back, right in the middle. So think 50% at the bottom, half and half. And again, tighten everything up. Rip your toes into the floor. Tighten the hips. There should be no wasted movement. You shouldn't be wiggling as you're descending. Again, that, pist that piston going up and down, the straight vertical position. Bam, bam. No wasted movement. Beautiful. Switch feet. So, kind of, we're doing a lot, a lot of squeezing here, a lot of contractions, in addition to the weights, uh, in addition to the strength training exercise as well. This is very, very important, learning how to brace yourself because when do injuries happen? When the muscle becomes relaxed and something gives. So if you can maintain that tightness, the chances of injury are incredibly reduced, okay? So plus the bottom, brace, drive. We'll do like three more here. And then we're actually gonna move up here. So again, rehash of the techniques, the lower body bracing, gripping your feet into the floor, gripping or making sure your knees are nice and strong. Basically, if someone comes over, they should not be able to tilt you over. Good, that's simple. Next, feet at shoulder width position, slight bend in the knees, kind of soft knees is the way we call it. Elbows, or excuse me, shoulder blades are down and back. We don't want them to be rounded, but also we don't want them hyperextended either. So down and back, neutral position is what we call this. Now, bring the hips back. This is our traditional Romanian deadlift, right? So you should feel a real big pull in the hamstrings. Now, if you don't feel the pull in the hamstrings, it's probably because your feet are too bent. So keep them just before they lock out. So maximally uh, lengthen just before that lockout. And focus on bringing the hips back towards something. Tend to like a wall behind you. And you're bringing that butt back as far as you can, as far as you can, because the further the hips track back, the more pull, the more stretch you get on those hamstrings. Now, once you reach a point where you really feel them, hold for a second, thrust forward, okay? So reach back, reach back, hold, feel that pull, drive forward. Now, you see, I can't even get parallel to the floor, and that's fine. Because of my tightness, this is as far as I can get my hips before my back comes into play. What happens is if the hips can no longer retract, the last couple of degrees of movement are all in the lumbar. We don't want that. So just practice getting into this position where you feel a really good pull. Because after this, we're going to go into some twists and some stretching. Good. So now we're going to hold that bottom position. So bring the butt back, hold this position, feel that pull, hands together like this, and I want you to twist one side and to the other. So you're going to feel a huge pull somewhere near the flank, the glute, the hamstring. And it all depends on how stiff you are. And just twist from one side to the other. Let me give you a different view here. Now, if you notice that throughout the stretch routine, you start to raise and that torso starts to elevate, reset, get back into that low position and continue twisting. I yeah, really want to make sure we're nice and loose before we do core. So I, want the, I want the proper muscles to be activated. Three more here on your side. Big old twist. Feel that pull. If you feel resistance or you feel the tightness, then 
to work at that angle. Work to loosen everything up. This is an assessment, really. Telling you which sides are compensating, which sides are really, really tight. That's fine. Beautiful. Very good. Very good. So let's work on kind of like our torso bracing, okay? To get back into our, uh, our power position where people are going to be coming over, pushing you over. And now, I want you to pretend like you're picking something up with just your right hand, okay? So you got to get in the low position, or actually high position, brace everything, get that squat in, okay? Brace the, uh, brace the ankles, knees, and hips nice and tight. And now pretend you're holding like a thousand pounds in your right hand. And you're just holding it. And you're not letting it drop. The whole point of this is to create um, lateral tension here in the obliques, okay? This way you're not shifting side to side. So just brace and hold. You should feel on that right side <laughs> something, at least those obliques, those transverse abdominals, something in that side that's holding. Beautiful. Shake it off. Again, five second hold. We're gonna do it on the left side. So again, half squat position, brace everything, tighten up. Things you're holding like a thousand pounds. You're, you're trying to lift the car up with one, with one hand. Get in, get in the position, hold, and brace. Three, two, beautiful. Shake it off. Good. Now we're going to work front to back. We're going to be playing a little tug of war here. Okay. Again, get into our power position. Now pretend like someone is trying to pull you towards them. So there's someone standing right here, and they're pulling, right? Get in position and pull. Resist that pull. Resist that pull. And you feel just this full body control and just this tension. Really, it's control. That's what we're trying to teach you. Relax. Again, in the position, power position, brace everything, tighten up the glutes, and resist that pull. They're pulling you towards them, but you're holding it. Shake it off, shake it off. Same thing, but now they're going to be pulling you back. So the person standing behind you, they're wrapping that rope around you, and they're pulling, they're pulling. What are you doing? Get into position and bracing. Now, there is you know, some uh, imagery required uh, with these techniques, so just do your best. Trust me, just believe in the process. When we drop into a plank, it'll all start to make sense. Take a breather. Here we go, five seconds, last one. Power position, brace yourself, and resist them as they're trying to pull you back. It's almost, you know, you're shifting yourself forward. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Beautiful, relax. Good, so we've knocked out the lower body, knocked out the middle torso, now we're up to the shoulders, right? So, um, when you're, anytime you're doing a plank, uh, the, the elbow, or really the shoulders and the elbows need to be down, right? We don't want to be up here. So the way that we can anchor the shoulder blades down is by lat recruitment. The latissimus, very long, broad, long muscles here. What happens is when they fire, when they shorten, they contract, they depress the shoulder blades, right? So quick little anatomy lesson here. Shrug up and uh, kind of squeeze your head like a pimple, right? You feel like those neck muscles working? Those are the traps, okay? This is actually the exact opposite of what we want to happen. We want those traps to relax and for your shoulders to shoot down as hard as they can, as low as they can. And if you do this, sometimes you can feel a little pull here, you know, that, that base, that joint. So let's practice those. Come up, squeeze, your head like a pimple. One, two, three, four. So it's a hold, we're not repping, it's a hold. Good, and now shoot them down as hard as you can. Shoot them down as hard as you can. Feel these shoulder blades being depressed. Feel these lats fire. Three, two, one. Again, the opposite. Squeeze your head like a pimple. One, two, three, four, five. And shoot down. One, two, three, four, five. Again, one more time. Squeeze your head like a pimple. One, two, three, four, five. And then shoot them down. One, two, three, four. And just hold this position. So you'll notice when you're actively shooting your shoulders down, kind of your upper body feels stable, right? You feel hard as a rock. Again, that's the whole point of plank. Muscular tension from your ankles all the way up to the shoulders, right? Now we're starting to get a feel for it. So relax. Um, if you didn't really feel lats in that exercise, 
Um, another good one is, we're gonna use some imagery here. Pretend that there's a bar right in front of you, right? You're holding on to it, and then you're trying to bend it. You're trying to bend it down. So what this does, it rotates, um, the radius rotates your arm immediately, so internally, actually. And what this does, and I'll pause at the bottom here. So we start here, squeeze that bar, and hold it at the bottom here. What this does, it rotates your shoulder blades from this position down and up. So I'm here, and I'm shooting them down. You should, be, you should be feeling it in those lower lats. Okay, so again, pretend the bar's in front of you, and squeeze it and bend it, and then end position is your arms are kind of just, your hands are just below your belly button here. You're squeezing, 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 and relax. Again, if you feel it in the shoulders and the arms, kind of not really what we want. We want beneath the shoulder blades, okay? One more time, here, hold it, and squeeze, bring it down, bring those shoulders down. One, two, three, four, five, relax. Good. Now, if those two techniques, if they didn't really help you at all, then keep it simple. Just keep the shoulders down and back. If they're that, it's at least a step in the right direction, okay? So here we go. Let's actually work out. Okay, exercise one, the plank, okay? Hands are gonna be shoulder width position. We don't want them out here, we want them right in here. And very important, we don't want the, the arms too high or too low. If anything, the shoulder needs to be right in line with the elbow, okay? So, we're lining up. Look at my position, my shoulder's right in line with the elbow, arms are out. I'm not too front, I'm not too back, they're nice and straight. So, we're gonna hold it for 15 seconds, and now I want you to brace um, your, uh, your hips, your torso, and your upper body, those lats, okay? This is only gonna be a 15 second uh, pause, okay? So here we go, tighten the butt, create that brace. This way, again, use imagery. If I come around and I try to knock you over, you should be able to resist me. That's the kind of tension I want, okay? And again, start from the butt, tighten that up so I can't move you side to side, tighten up your torso so I can't shift you side to side, and depress those shoulder blades down. So we should not be up here. We're not pinching our head. Our shoulders are down. One, two, three, and that's 15 seconds. Beautiful, disengage. Good job. Nothing to it, right? Let's do it one more time here just so you guys can get comfortable. So again, shoulders and elbows, hands are flat on the floor, into position, and hold. So the beautiful thing about bracing is that it automatically fixes a lot of issues. Make sure that you're keeping that butt nice and high though. We don't want you to drop. It should be at neutral or a little elevated. As long as it's not sagging, that's the whole idea. So remember, full body bracing. It fixes a lot of issues here. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Beautiful, good. You should feel, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like much, and that's why the plank can be, uh, uh, it can be, it can be <laughs> a little sneaky at times, because from the outside, it doesn't look like you're doing much, but. Okay, so let's play around with some variations. Side plank now, okay? So similar concepts. Shoulders are over the elbows, like so. Now your top foot, I want it in front of you, and your bottom foot is just slightly behind you, like so, okay? So from a side view, yes. Just remember, top foot always goes in front, okay? Top foot is always in front. Good. Shoulders are in line, we're holding here. So a little um, a technique cue, pretend there's like a little piece of string that's pulling your hips up. So a little piece of string, so it's holding my hips up, it's holding my hips up. And ooh, you're gonna feel it on that right side. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is too difficult, you can simply drop the bottom leg like so, onto the floor. And just focus on keeping that hip up. Again, you should be feeling it in your right oblique, that right side. Beautiful, relax. Let's switch sides, give the other side some love here. So. Elbow in line with the what? The shoulder. Right foot is on top, which means it's gonna go in front. Okay. Elevate that right hip, pretend there's a piece of string. We're bringing that hip up to the sky. Again, this is too difficult. You just simply drop the left foot and just focus on keeping that hip high. Hip high, hip high. 
You can even exaggerate it a little bit just so you can feel that left, uh, that left oblique kicking in. And don't forget about that full body tension. Brace everything, guys. Shoulders down. Squeeze the glute. If I come around, I should not be able to knock you over. Beautiful. Relax. Disengage. Good work. Good. Now, the last exercise in our series um, is just typical floor work. You see this in Pilates and most ab classes. I want you nice and flat on the floor. We're going to go into a hollow hole. So, shoulder blades are going to come off the floor, just like so. And again, it doesn't have to be exaggerated. Really, your lumbar is still going to be connected to the floor while you do this. The shoulder blades are off the floor. You should feel those top abs starting to fire now. Just hold this position, okay? Nice deep breaths. Again, see, I'm not leading with my chin. I'm not leading with my arms. If anything, my arms are out of the movement altogether. You can have them on the floor if you want. Just focus on raising your chest and your shoulder blades off the floor. Now, some people do experience chin pain uh, or, or neck pain. What I recommend, bring your arms behind you and then come up. This way, you're kind of, you're shifting that center of gravity so you're not leaning. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, relax. Good. We're going to run it back again. This time, we're going to start including the lower body, okay? So, shoulder blades up, off the ground, hand position, personal preference. I'm going to have them back like so. Raise one leg. And then raise the other. Here we go. This is a basic hollow hold. Some key principles. Keep that lumbar nice and flat on the floor. You don't want the lumbar to round. You shouldn't be able to put, if you can put your hand underneath your lumbar while you do this, it's too round. Flatten it down. Now, if you can't do the double leg, start with one. One, two, three, and switch. By all means, challenge yourself. Do the double ones if you can. Five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Disengage. Here we go. Good. Flip on over. We're back to the planks. So if you feel that you've mastered the plank, we're going to go into a high plank, also called the starting push-up position. So we're right here. Again, principles are very, are very similar. That arm is nice and straight. Shoulders are right in line with our wrists. Um, there's some personal preference as far as hand position. I prefer a little bit wider than shoulder width, kind of like to replicate an actual push-up position. Some people like a little bit closer. That's fine, because the whole point is we're really not working the triceps here. We're just focusing on the brazen. So here we go. Get in that position. Everything else is pretty much identical, guys. Tighten up. Brace. Glutes are tight. Torso is tight. And the shoulders are down and back. Flare those lats. Try to flare those lats. 15 seconds, guys. And remember, you're on your toes. And disengage. Good work. Beautiful. Okay. We're going to shift over to the side plank. So kind of, you'll notice with each circuit, we add a layer of complexity. Um, by all means, challenge yourself in a safe manner. If you don't, if you haven't mastered the previous exercise, revert back to that one, okay? You don't want to proceed if you haven't mastered the basics. Got to learn to walk before we can run, right? And remember, you can always go back and run through these exercises as much as you want. That's why I put them up on my YouTube channel. Now, you know, we're holding these positions, going to the side plank, guys. We're, going to, we're holding these positions for, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. If that's too easy for you, try the advanced variations. If you don't like those, simply extend the time that you do. So here we go. Straight arm, shoulders down and back, anchored in. Get that hip nice and high. This is too easy. Let's do a little pulse here, okay? Drop and up. Drop and up. Drop and up. Remember, pull. Pull those hips high. Pretend there's that string there. Dropping and up. Drop and up. Pull. Bring those hips up. Bring those hips up. Two, one. Fantastic. Good. Let's switch. Woo. I'm sweating. I'm sweating and I'm not even doing much here. Here we go. Side plank position. Remember, if you're on your right side, your left foot is on top. 
So it goes in front. And here we go. Do any variation that you want. You can do a hold. You can do a pulse here, or reps. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Just make sure for now that your technique is on point. You're nice and strong. You're tense. You're, you're basically just a piece of iron here, a piece of steel. So think upper body is stable, lower body is stable, and just those hips are shifting up and down. Four, three, two, one, beautiful disengage. Very good. Back on our backs in our hollow hold position, okay? Arms up, get those shoulder blades off the floor. You can alternate feet if you want. Intermediate variation is both feet up. And kind of a little expert variation. Now we've got some flutter kicks going. Keep your toes pointed away from you. Again, back is nice and flat on the floor. And make sure to keep those shoulder blades off the floor. What happens is that you're so focused on your lower body that your upper body starts to sag. Nope, fight against it. Keep those shoulders nice and high, okay? Got 10 seconds left, here we go. I'm dogging it. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, beautiful, disengage, good job. Here we go, back on over, push up position. So we're gonna be playing around with our balance here. We're gonna kinda get you um, <laughs> out of your comfort zone. So, a lot of times, kind of, we're in our, uh, look, look at my foot position here. So we're a little bit wide. As you go closer, it makes the exercise a lot more difficult. But it's not just the lower body that we can play around with. You can play around with that upper body, too. So get in that position, nice and tight. And now what you want to do, if you widen your face a little bit, I want you to reach with your left arm and come back down. Now, you'll notice even I have some compensation. You'll notice as I move my right hand, everything starts to shift. We want to work against that. Tighten, brace everything so that as you elevate that hand, your entire body doesn't shift from one side to another. Because your body loves to compensate. We're trying to work those muscles. The body will naturally find uh, the path of least resistance. We don't want to make, we don't want to make it too easy. So it keeps the hips square. Keep everything in line. Tighten everything. Again, if this is too easy, simply move the feet closer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, even even myself, I gotta stay wide here. Never substitute, you know, a challenging exercise just for the sake of doing it. You want to learn the proper technique, okay? You gotta earn the right to kind of to progress. Good. Here we go. Um, back on the floor for the side plank. This time, we have, as always, I have a little trick up my sleeve here. And what we can do is keep that left arm up and swing through. So swing through and up. Now again, adhere to those basic principles. Keep those hips high. We don't want them to be sagging. Add the layers of complexity as you master the basics. Woo, brutal. 10 more seconds, guys. There's nothing to play with. Woo, that right side should be firing. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, good, switch sides. Now remember, this isn't just, you know, you shooting the arms through. You wanna really twist. So left side, right hip is high. Feet are anchored, elbows anchored, you're twisting, you're rotating, and then coming out. So just doing it with your arm, that's not doing anything. We want that torso to rotate and then come high, okay? Rotate, come high. For a lot of these exercises, because they require so much stability, you will be doing these slow and controlled, okay? Don't try to you know, fly through them. Speed comes with technique. If anything, speed is kind of like the last frontier. It's that last layer of complexity. Okay, here we go. Feel like two more here. Twist. 
twist, and twist, beautiful, good. Here we go, on our back side. So, shoulder blades up, hands up, both feet together. So, we went through single legs, double legs, um, flutter kicks, last one is the V sit. So you're basically, it's a, it's a, it's a floor crunch with straight legs. So you're coming up and down. Try to touch your toes if you can. And just that, I mean that, you're basically like a door hinge here, like an accordion. And then it's just, I mean, it just tears up your abs. Let's be honest, I mean, I've been torturing you on the floor the past 10 minutes, your abs are just shot. And what a way to end it, you know? Just, <laughs> sprinkling a little sugar on top. Maybe 10, nine, eight, seven. Woo! Here we go, I'm, I'm hurting here. Six, five, four. Finish up, finish up. Three, two, and one. Beautiful, good. Stay on the floor. Quick little burnout, okay? Here we go. Heel touches, feet at. Uh, 45 degrees, 45 degree fl fraction, flexion on the knees. I want your hands to touch your heels. So your hands are just going side to side. Keep those shoulder blades up, heel touches. Here we go, 15 seconds. 14, 13, 12, 11. So you're just shifting side to side. You're hitting those obliques and the shoulder blades are up. You're just destroying what's left. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, relax. Disengage, beautiful work, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, so that is um really the ab routine was only like ten or fifteen minutes. Um, so if you are gonna review this workout, just simply start from the middle and work your way down. But it was just it was important for me to include that proper plank position and really bracing. That's kind of the theme of today. Because anyone can just hold the plank position, but what are you really doing, right? And the beautiful thing is that plank, that bracing, it carries over into a lot of things, such as, you know, your typical body weight movements. We saw that with the squat, um, TRX. I know you guys are very, uh, uh, it's very you guys really have, really love doing that. And again, that's basically you're doing a plank while you're doing rows and push-ups. So a lot of carryover uh, from the plank position. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you guys need anything. I'm here for you. Be well, be healthy. Have a good one.